We are talking beyond the rave. Now this is a vampire horror movie, obviously about raving, not to be confused with the other rave horror movie, The Ten of the Living Dead Five, uh, Rave from the Grave, I believe it was called. Now this one is directed by Matthias Hone and stars uh, Jamie Dornan, obviously he from the Fifty Shades of Grey fame, and Nora Jane Noon. Now this is a somewhat historic movie in a, in a, long, a lot of ways. This was released in 2008 and was the first movie produced by Hammer Studios. Obviously, yes, that Hammer Studios who produced a lot of classic kind of horror films of the past. It's their first film from a 29 year hiatus. Their last movie prior to this was released in 1979 and this one was released in 2008. But let me tell you, it ain't your grandpappy's Hammer movie. Let me just kind of say that. It's also interesting how this movie was first released because it was actually released on uh, MySpace and it was actually cut up into 20 episodes uh, and then kind of like put out once a day or something like that. So it had a kind of quite a unique kind of release uh, structure initially and was almost like lots of webisodes before it was an actual film then obviously re-edited and now you can buy it as a film. So there you go, that's your kind of your, your kind of background information, so to speak. But what is the story about here, you might ask? Well, let, let me tell you. So it focuses mainly on this character called Ed, who's played by Jamie Dornan. And he is a guy who has joined up to the military and is just about to kind of get shipped out uh, the next day to like Afghanistan or Iraq or somewhere. And he is extremely kind of nervous. He didn't really kind of want to kind of be a soldier because he felt he had to through kind of family legacy and all that. Uh, and he's got this kind of girlfriend who he's a somewhat odds with and he wants to try and kind of meet up with her but he, she's going to this kind of underground rave where, you know, it's all kind of hush-hush where it is. So he and a group of friends manage to find out where this rave is and it's obviously in a kind of hidden location. Nobody kind of knows where it is and anything like that. It's kind of word of mouth only. Uh, however, unbeknownst to them, the rave has actually been organised by a group of vampires who actually want to seclude people and kind of have them in a, you know, a kind of out the way area without any kind of means of escape, really. Lock him in this kind of, uh, this uh, building where the rave is taking place and feast upon their blood. So what will happen? Well, you're going to have to watch the movie to find out. So let's discuss, first of all, what works with this film. As I've mentioned, this is an extremely different film to the traditional style Hammer movies. So I really don't think you can compare this film uh, to previous Hammer movies, because it's just not like that. This is more, much more of a modern kind of teen splatter movie, uh, more than anything else, with kind of a Guy Ritchie kind of style um, sense of humour and aesthetic in a lot of ways. We'll discuss a little bit more. So let's talk about what works. So I do think there is a, a reasonable amount of bloody violence in this movie. The vampires in this film are quite brutal and quite bloodthirsty and uh, they're not kind of like Nosferatu, they're just kind of humans with fangs and everything. So they don't look uh, anything like too grotesque, but they are extremely kind of violent and kind of messy when it comes to their feasting on their kind of prey and things like that. And we see a variety of different deaths. Speaking of deaths, this movie does have quite a high body count. So those who are, you know, who require lots of kind of people to kind of get it munched on and killed off, there's lots of it. A lot of them are kind of red shirts, kind of just, you know, no-name characters and things like that. But nonetheless, there's, there's a fairly high body count in this film. The film actually does have an interesting kind of style of sense of humour. I'll say interesting rather than good because... I feel this is very going to be very subjective. But if you are a fan of the works of Guy Ritchie, uh, in case you don't know, we're talking stuff like um, Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, Snatch, movies like that. It has that kind of like um, East End kind of gangster kind of language through it and lots of, a lot of swearing. Um, 
some, you know, pretty kind of like, doesn't hold back on any language. Let me just put it like this. And it's very much, we have these, kind of, these three drug dealers who, have, to be honest with you, are, are probably my favourite characters in the film because they're so kind of over the top and full of it straight from a kind of a Guy Ritchie film. Uh, and they're in there as well as kind of like sub characters that don't really have much to do with the, the main plot, but they're there. And that they obviously have quite a lot of kind of like uh, comedy swearing and kind of comedy kind of like bravado um, with, other, with kind of other characters and things like this. So there is that kind of sense of humour, although it's not going to be for everyone. If you find Guy Ritchie stuff amusing, chances are you'll kind of find uh, this one kind of amusing as well. The effects wise, like I said, the vampires aren't particularly kind of grotesque, but I think they did a decent enough job here. And one thing that I did appreciate, this is a very small thing, but it kind of, to me I liked it. One of the things I hate about kind of low budget vampire movies, and this, isn't, this isn't a high budget film, is where people who have, you know, are the vampire characters feel the need to constantly kind of show off their fangs whilst they are talking, uh, as if to so that, you know, we can see that they're a, they're a vampire and they spent money on having these fangs. But that, it never really strikes me as, as realistic because vampires who have lived with fangs for centuries potentially aren't going to be constantly curling their lips so we as the audience can see their fangs. They'll just talk naturally. And that's kind of what they do here. It's a small thing, I know, but it's something that kind of bothers me in, in vampire films. But, I'm going to be honest with you, this one was not a good return for Hammer films because the movie structure here, first and foremost, is terrible. Um, because this movie, I feel, was, its initial kind of release was this episodic approach to, um, to, be, you know, to be played on MySpace. Every kind of like few minutes, you need to have that kind of like little kind of moment so it would have that episodic kind of feel to it. So, we, you know, we don't have an episode which is purely you know, two people talking in one room. So we don't have like those kind of like long sequences of dialogue. It very much feels like a kind of ADHD style, um, you know, someone's had too much kind of caffeine, a kind of style of, of movie where this editing is very kind of quick and... You just feel like you're flitting past kind of like characterization because we kind of need to get a, you know, a decent scene for each of the kind of the 20 or so episodes that, that was on these kind of on this uh, web series. So we can't just have a slow moment where we kind of get to know the characters. Now, when you're watching this as a film rather than the kind of the episodic approach, I don't know who the hell anyone was in this film. It's, it wasn't until we get to, towards the end of the film that I started to kind of get to know the characters a little bit. But we, because we just don't know them, uh, because it just skips over any type of like slow kind of characterization or, or time spent with the characters. So we don't get any real, even from our main character, uh, Jamie Dornan, all, all that we really know is he... He seems like a bit of a dick, to be quite honest with you, because he seems to be quite awful to, to his kind of girlfriend. Um, but we kind of, we're meant to believe because he sort of says he loves her, I'm always forgiven. You know, I, was, I won't worry that we, I've heard that you've cheated on me or whatever. It's just kind of like very sort of um, basic and, you know, not realistic writing in a lot of ways. Although I suppose in some, uh, some circumstances that could be very true. Uh, but yeah, we just don't get to know the characters, therefore we don't care. And as I say, some characters just seem very superficial. Um, uh, maybe there's too many characters as well. Because there's, for example, we have like Jamie Dornan's character has this kind of like friend of like a shaved head. And he had a girlfriend and I was like, oh, I don't even remember seeing his girlfriend before. But apparently there's a scene where something happens to her and he's like, oh my God, you know, my girlfriend is like... I didn't even realize you had a girlfriend because it's just kind of skipped past it. Um, but then we, you know, we were introduced to like these, these like, trio of drug dealers plus the kind of the, uh, you know, the girlfriend that's already at this kind of um, rave and all of obviously the vampire characters themselves. You don't know who anyone is. It's such poor character work here. The cinematography, to be honest, is quite bad. Uh, obviously, it's it's a vampire movie. It's set at night, but obviously we are 
talking about uh, in a rave with kind of lights and stuff but the the actual cinematography here is pretty poor and the, the, the you know it's kind of like aliens versus predator requiem where we have quite poor lighting in scenes and i get that obviously it's supposed to be in the night uh, but nonetheless you can't see what's going on a lot of the times and it's a little bit kind of frustrating and because this was made as i say as a kind of a originally as webisodes it just seems so kind of like uh, the pacing is just all over the place um and it ultimately becomes quite unsatisfying. I think as we get towards the end, uh, it, it gets a little bit too silly at times. And I think some of the vampire characters seem way over the top and kind of like way kind of like overacting and going, you know, just posing in kind of certain sequences because the still shot might look, might look cool. But when you see it in a, in a kind of a moving image, it just looks stupid. Um, this is a very unsatisfying... I think movie as a, as a narrative I think there are some flashy elements in regards to some of the visuals I would say that but as a narrative as a story it really does kind of fall flat and I think maybe that was partially to do with the, the release strategy uh, I don't know if that was always going to be the case maybe uh, the, the uh, MySpace somewhat funded it I don't know but uh, nonetheless, it, as it works out, it's a pretty kind of messy film to watch. A few kind of, like I said, an interesting elements here and there. Um, we, you know, we have, we have a somewhat sympathetic kind of uh, vampire situation. It's never kind of built upon, though. It's, it's, a, it's a messy film, not the return to form that I think Hammer would have been hoping for. Have you seen this 2008 vampire movie? Let us know, what did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I shall look forward to seeing you next time. It's a 3 out of 10 for me. Nearly forgot to give it a score. 3 out of 10. Bye for now.